coming. And uh, in this way, I'm opening the second day of the conference, Echo Friendly Built Environment. I'm very glad that uh, I can see some faces that I haven't seen for quite a bit uh, from their college. Uh, and now uh, they're here with us as practitioners. So welcome. Uh, and uh, the first day was uh, very interesting, but from the academical point of view, and we had um, an opportunity to see some different methodologies uh, to discuss the scope and scale of uh, eco-friendly approach to built environment. And today we will have the opportunity to actually see uh, uh, what what the practices are working in that uh, direction. So the first uh, panel session uh, for today, uh, with the name macro uh, from macro scale to from micro scale to macro impact. So the, the very point of this session uh, is there, uh, as the very heart of this session is small tactical moves uh, with the prospect of major impact on the built environment. We will have three um, panelists, but those three panelists are not only three persons. Uh, these are uh, just the representatives of uh, uh, some co-authorship uh, and even some teams. So first of all, the, uh, I will have the pleasure to, uh, to announce all those three panelists, and then I will ask them to come and present and give uh, those uh, small presentations. So um, the first in line uh, uh, is the co-authorship of Dr. Ivan Spasilevic and Dr. Danica Stojinkovic. Dr. Danica Stojinkovic is an architect and research associate at the University of Belgrade Institute for Multidisciplinary Research. And Dr. Ivan Spasovic, who will be the representative for today, is a biophysicist, a research professor, and PI of a multidisciplinary research group at the University of Belgrade. His studies are mainly focused on the um, physiology and biotechnological applications of microalgae. Even led several projects founded by Science and for Peace and Security Program, UNDP Serbia, and the Innovation Fund. His goal is to combine scientific excellence with applications and innovations. He's the author and co-author of more than 80 scientific papers. So um, the second panelist or the second par, pair here uh, with us today is Stefan Radošević, master architect, graduated from Faculty of Architecture, University of Belgrade in 2013, where he was for a time involved in bachelor studies as a teaching student assistant. Participant uh, in many domestic and regional competitions where he was, he has won several awards. His work combines elements of architecture, artistic installation and film into multi-layered creative outputs. Initiator of a group ADA and altruistic activist architectural innovation Otvorena engaged in the project of a youth park in Čačak. He has formed his architectural experience to work in domestic and international offices, as well as in independent practice as a co-founder of Ada Collective. And the other participant, Luka Višnić, master architect, graduated from the Faculty of Architecture, University of Belgrade in 2015. After completing his studies of architecture, he starts working in an architectural studio in which he gets acquainted with the architectural practice in Serbia in an objective way, recognizing the problems of architecture in crisis. Shortly afterwards, he forms the ADA group, where he is engaged in research, socially driven, activist and educational work with the aim of launching an initiative for further reflection and action in the field of architecture and urban design. He is a participant in numerous competitions in which he is often awarded. And the third panelist for today, Diana Stupar, is an architect and associate professor at AGGF, University of Banja Luka, or to be more precise, Faculty of Architecture and Civil Engineering and Geodesia, yes, <laughs> uh, at Banja Luka. She is interested in design research methodologies which focus on collaborative design processes and qualitative evaluation of physical environment. She also works as an architecture practitioner involving artistic and professional engagement. She has received several awards for the architectural design exhibited and presented on national and international architecture 
Tetra manifestation. Today, she is here as a member of Banaluka Small Intervention Meeting. So uh, I will just ask you to present the meeting because I think it will be more appropriate from your side. So please, the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ivan Spasic. I'm a professor at the Institute for Middle Eastern Research, University of Belgrade. Uh, I'm here to talk about uh, a concept of full of photobioreactor. We called it uh, Liquid 3 that we developed recently uh, with the support of UNDP Serbia, uh, Minister of uh, Environmental Protection of Republic of Serbia and Global Environmental Facility. Uh, the system uh, uses microalgae uh, to clean the air. It is aimed uh, to, to be installed in urban areas that cannot accommodate uh, traditional days of rain. So if there is no room for lawns or for trees, or land is too pricey or uh, pollution is very intensive, soil pollution is intensive, uh, you cannot put uh, traditional greening. So uh, we developed a concept that uh, that can uh, be a supplement to this. Sorry for this, but yeah, yeah, yeah. video seen in the PowerPoint presentation is unreliable. So. Mm -hmm. so, uh, the concept uh, was developed by a multidisciplinary team. I, I'm a biophysicist, and Dr. Nancy is an architect, your colleague, and also we, we, uh, we have a one, one biologist focused in mycology. Uh, the project was developed uh, within a call that was entitled Climate Smart Urban Development Challenge. So the goal was to find innovative uh, concept that could target uh, greenhouse gases, including carbon dioxide in urban areas. Uh, urban areas are uh, high, uh, high emitters of carbon. So about 70% of all carbon dioxide is produced on, on Earth is produced in urban areas. And you can see here, a map that was built by NASA of, of USA and uh, through uh, the emission of carbon throughout uh, the, the territory. All these intensively red dots are basically urban areas. In addition, uh, urban areas produce a lot of PM particles, PM 2.5 and 10, you, you hear about them in news, they are particularly dangerous to, to human health. And um, this is related, of course, to a dense, uh, dense uh, high de uh, population density, uh, industrial activity, uh, municipal services such as public heating, intensive traffic. On the other hand, a lot of people use that they are in the urban area. So uh, about 80% of people in, in the world are affected by, by uh, the, the polluted air. And this basically represents a major challenge for sustainability and for functioning of urban areas. So people would like to live in the cities because they provide the different opportunities, but if this affects your health, lifestyle, then that might not be that much viable. And uh, so additional greening is absolutely needed. Uh, there, there are limits to it. And uh, it is important to, to point out that you cannot um, uh, increase uh, the impact of greening just by making large parks on the periphery of, the, uh, of urban areas, because uh, even distribution of greening is essential. It is related to the uh, commercial success of, of a specific city to its social sustainability and justice. So you need to have green green areas throughout the, 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 the entire urban, um, uh, urban space. And uh, for this, you need some innovative uh, solutions that should be efficient, robust, and that could fit uh, urban environment. And uh, uh, our system is based on microalgae. Why microalgae? Uh, because they are very efficient in binding carbon dioxide. They bind 10 uh, to 50% uh, uh, times more uh, carbon dioxide than terrestrial plants. And they also produce oxygen. They produce biomass as well. So you can use this biomass as biofertilizer. So they are very efficient, but they live in water. So you have to make a, a vessel for them that should be transparent because they also do photosynthesis like plants. So you have to put them in glass tanks or in plastic tanks. And these systems are already available on the market. So these are photobioreactors in, in the upper panels. There are different types. But these, 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 uh, these examples are used to produce biomass for commercial purposes. So you want to grow microalgae in order to produce like omega-3 fatty acids or some food pigments. And these systems are uh, 
very pricey, they are fragile, and they are uh, not that nice appearing, so they, they will not fit the urban area. You cannot put these systems on the street. There are some, some of them are very large as well. So uh, we wanted to develop something that is based on microbiology and that can, can fit uh, urban environments. So uh, we combined two, two principles. Uh, this uh, portal bioreactor of, uh, bioreactor of ours uh, uses uh, two principles. One is flat panel. So this is like a large flat uh, vessel. And within it, we put air from the bottom, uh, which is an air lift principle. So there are air lifts portal bioreactors. This air is used to deliver carbon dioxide to the microalgae as well to steer the culture. So you have to steer them a bit, otherwise they will go to the bottom. And um, this, uh, this uh, system of ours uh, contains about 600 liters of water. So uh, these microalgae bind carbon dioxide, they emit oxygen, produce biomass. And this is equivalent to one tree that is 20 years old or to 200 square meters of land. So basically, you have a system that you can install within a day anywhere in the city. Basically, you can put it even in the, in the malls or in the tunnels because we have some LED light as well. And it can be uh, not replaced, but it can, uh, it can su supplement one adult tree. Uh, the system also, because this air goes through the water, it works also as, as a water column, as a water filter. So it removes PM particles. So we also did the analysis of how much this metals from the air from these PM particles are, is trapped in the system and we clean about 1,000 cubic meters of air uh, per month. So I think that, that's not, not, not that bad. So uh, the system is active all year round. So it's also green during the winter when the pollution is at, at its peak. So that is a critical period when there nothing is green uh, except for the little thing. So uh, uh, it, it hits the, the hot spot of the, of the pollution, the peak of the pollution. Uh, of course, if, if we just would uh, put like a photobioreactor in the street, that would be a, a bad idea because it will not be accepted by the society, basically by, by, uh, by people that live in, in urban environments. So we offered uh, some additional components. One is multifunctionality. One is, of course, uh, safety. That was our priority to, to have very uh, stable construction, uh, uh, statically safe and uh, uh, with materials that are safe. And uh, also, we wanted to, to implement some principles of urban design. So regarding multifunctionality, the, the system is also a bench. It is also a solar uh, uh, charger. So if you use solar light, you can charge your phone or laptop. And it also it is a night light. Uh, we wanted to use green materials, recyclable materials. So we use glass and steel. Uh, and uh, we followed uh, specific uh, parameters of, of urban design. So uh, urban design, and I'm a biophysicist, so it is something that I learned uh, on the way. So it should not be uh, overemphasized. It should be attractive, dynamic. It should interact with people. Uh, and uh, we particularly uh, uh, paid attention to the design of the bench, because bench has this romantic vibe from movies and from, from, from literature. So we, we, uh, we carefully put the position of, made the position of it and the shape. And uh, we have this slender vertical axis and we provide basically a comfort to the user. You, you are basically sitting on the street, near the street, but you're protecting from, from the uh, traffic and you can interact with people or passers pass by. Uh, it also stands for certain values. So it uh, underlines the importance of environmental protection of uh, Quality, uh, high quality urban life or fight uh, against climate changes. And it also promotes communications. So uh, uh, we watched a bit of this, this system and, and we, we observed that there is like a covert communication as a main, main, uh, main, main player communication to people. Promote. Covert communication is when uh, something attracts your eye and then you see how other people react to it. And then you see that they react in a similar way as you then you can see, okay, I, I'm sharing similar values with this person, and then this may lead to direct communication. So uh, the the system, uh, I think that it, it produced a good uh, public response, and we also got a lot of uh, good response from media. And uh, what I wanted to share, because I, I uh, thought as uh, uh, important component of, of the crowd are, are the students, what is important when you have a certain project, this was the side project for us, basically. I'm, I have a PhD student and do some science in bi biology and uh, other members of the team, they have their own projects and uh, working on, on scientific papers. 
So we, we, we started this story and we noted that it has some potential. So we always responded to anyone that asked anything. So I, I, I got emails from uh, people that like individuals from US asking for all students from Germany. I, I made meetings with them. We, we built a small like uh, booklet and shared this. And this interest, public interest and interest of media then led to commercial interest. And then we, we have now two more to install, one in Belgrade and one in Ruzica. And then this leads to uh, technology transfer. So we have companies interested in, in uh, buying this, this technology and producing these systems. And this all started from, from a project that was like, okay, let's try. And uh, so it is important to keep your story alive, to be proactive. And uh, what is also important to note is that uh, we are not, not, not the first one to, to have this idea of using microalgae to uh, clean urban, urban areas. So there are a lot of uh, utopian concepts that you can find on the internet. And their, uh, their idea is uh, we would like to harvest like solar energy and clean the air using microalgae and maybe convert solar energy into uh, biofuels. Uh, and we want to make green facades and uh, would like to make green uh, urban mobiliar or different, different uh, things. There is even a specific uh, discipline in this, in this development. These are uh, green facades. And uh, one, one idea was even made in, in Serbia. So this is like a winning, uh, winning project for uh, reconstruction of Ozionica. It is an old big building that is to be reconstructed within the uh, perimeter of, of uh, Belgrade waterfront. And uh, basically the team had an idea to put a lot of these, these uh, photobioreactor on the facade and these would replace a lot of trees. And they were uh, like inspired with liquid tree and they called us after winning, let's have a meeting how to implement this. And then they switched trees. They decided let's put trees instead of a bioreactor. So uh, very few of these projects are implemented. And why is this? Because microalgae, like all biological systems, require maintenance. And when you do the design, it appears very nice. So it's green, it, it has these multiple functions. It, it's uh, like living facade, it's nice. But uh, then you come to reality and there is a part that, uh, that you have to do every month. And uh, I'm from biophysics, so this is like a multidisciplinary field and I see architecture as well uh, as, as a multidisciplinary field. So you have this artistic part, you have uh, design, you have aesthetic, uh, some aesthetics, you have construction, you have to fit like uh, social needs of humans and you have to fit biological needs of humans. So these biological needs are very stable. They change with time, but very slow. So uh, maybe uh, in architecture, it is, they, are, they are taken for granted. But, but sometimes you have to build a house for some other organism. In this case, this is a house for uh, microalgae. Maybe it will be a house for, it, uh, there will be a, a, a zoo will, will be moved in that way. So you will have to build like a building for animals or for plants. You will build a glass house. So these systems need some different, different biological settings compared to humans. So microalgae, they need water. Water is a very strange medium because it has this hydrostatic pressure. If you increase the height of column, the, the, the pressure becomes very large and then you uh, have to increase the thickness of the glass and that's, that increases the cost. So this is one issue that, that we, we had in, in mind when we constructed this. The other is that they tend to stick to glass because their food is light and they would like to be as close to food as us. So we, we also want to have some market nearby or some, some restaurant. They also like the restaurant close, so they stick to glass. And once a month, you have to clean the glass. You have to add the medium. You, 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 sometimes you have to change all, all of the water, sometimes a part of the water. So there is a maintenance. It happens once a month for us. But imagine putting this on the fifth floor. So this would be like a technical challenge that has to be overcome. And you can do it basically, but you have to take it into account when you calculate your prices, viability of the project. And uh, we uh, initially thought about the, the, the access to the system in order to, uh, to make the maintenance easier, how many hours it will take, how costly it will be. So these are important, important parameters. And uh, finally, uh, what might be the future of these bio, uh, photo, uh, photo bioreactors technology? So this, this might be, uh, this is something new. Uh, it, uh, it is called biofilm reactors. Basically you grow microalgae not in tanks with a lot of water, but on gels. And you can put these gels, I, I assume this is like completely new thing, on, on facade like, uh, like um, wallpaper and use it for a month, microalgae would grow there, clean the air, and when, you, uh, when, when the cycle is finished, you will change your wallpaper. 
So still it would require some maintenance, but these gels can be further used, as I mentioned, bio biomass can be used as a biofertilizer or for some other purposes. So that is it. I was a bit quick. Any questions now or later? Maybe we can have questions after the first time. Uh -huh, okay. I think it's a bit better. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Znam, 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 sam vidim, sam vidim, pokušam se tu da tomu nešto drugače. Okay. Good day, everybody. I'm Stefan from Manda Collective, and today we will talk about uh, uh, our, uh, our theme that we put together with uh, EcoBuild team because we do so much things, and that would be between production, activism, and education in art, design, and architecture. And that, and uh, we are going with a short intro. Uh, we call camping into the public space. Uh, that's it. That's how what. Uh, we've done uh, who we are, when, where, why. Uh, and as a theme, as a uh, other collective, we're engaged in uh, architectural urban uh, design, also furniture and interior design, as, a, as well as uh, in uh, uh, education and uh, activism through architecture. And uh, we, uh, our work we can uh, put in th these three segments. Uh, what an initiative studio work uh, and workshop work and today we, we will talk about what an initiative which we uh, for us it started as a first project then became a side project since it's something uh, uh, which is our initiative and something that is not quite a common professional studio work as we do in studio or to our workshop uh, product design so Otvoreno will be today's uh, topic and Otvoren is uh, our initiative, which we started in 2016, 15 or 16, I think. And we made that uh, as a play of mixed words in relation to, between them. So Otvoren like being created, uh, Otvoren like being open and Tvoren being created, made in Serbian, uh, with the aim to act in public spaces. So that's what we've done. And uh, Otvoren was a, started as a concept and then became a project and uh, at the end uh, initiative, ongoing initiative. And it's based on a self-initiated action of architects that would be us in this team, inclusion and participation of the local population in, in the educational process of design and construction and engagement of individuals a wide multimedia spectrum similar to us in, in uh, these kind of projects. So in this in interdisciplinary design social projects in many abundant, neglected, unused, misused, or abused public spaces. The work, met the work methodology ranges between uh, individual, uh, uh, often well thought, guerrilla, or by call actions in public spaces, and also as a collaborative interactions with citizens of all age groups on site-specific projects, uh, uh, spatial interventions to two phases in particular that, that would be shown and this uh, collaborative uh, interaction process is something we, we will share today basically because that's the thing we uh, value the most among all the things we've done through this initiative and through these works in these fields so uh, our collaborative interaction uh, ha has have that these two phases i mentioned one is opening the space and the other is creating the place so the first one is uh, mapping the public space uh, uh, and its uh, problems, uh, speaking with uh, the participants or, or stakeholders on people who live there and trying to open by analyzing, by making a cognitive and research maps or uh, workbooks, uh, surveys, anything, we, we, any media we, we can make and share with them to get, uh, to get us uh, an info about what to do next. 
and the next thing we would be creating the place that's the how we uh, with them can uh, create a place actually from, from their ideas and suggestions and that that methodology uh, had uh, three common characteristics we, we developed over time it's additional theme it's uh, putting uh, for us uh, it could be an, at one side uh, for architecture it could be uh, uh, putting a uh, uh, functional, uh, spatial, and uh, social needs into the context, but uh, when when it's participation of the other citizens and maybe children and education of them, uh, it is additional theme. Uh, it is additional education. So it's always architecture plus something else we can we can encounter. For example, botany or or, or ornithology dealing with other. Uh, other professions. So the, 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 other, the other thing is a reuse, recycle, remix, and ready made. It, it, it is about uh, using the materials and how we, what, and what we do with them. And the, the, the third is swing effect, which I will mention later at the end. So uh, how, uh, when it started, it started uh, as a camping, because for us as a patient campers, beside we are architects, it is a, uh, it's all, it was all about uh, architecture of minimalism. It was all about uh, uh, that uh, temporal uh, settlements. Uh, uh, when we are not in our profession, when we are in the bare nature and how we uh, interact with nature and, and what we live after leaving the nature. So, so uh, it started uh, 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 as a camping movement. And, 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 and considering uh, camping and nature through the, through the lenses of, of uh, architecture and, and a spatial uh, conquering the space, I would say in some, in some words. And then uh, it ended up uh, where, where? To public spaces. This will, this will be the first uh, space we, we've uh, worked with, with participants. And, and, and uh, the, what is different uh, from that camping is now it's inverse point. The camp, in the camping, we also we, uh, we often try to, to find some uh, inviting, welcoming place, a secure, beautiful in nature. But uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the case of public spaces, it would be uh, different. It would be some neglected, abused, misused, or, or abandoned space. So, so totally uh, opposite than, than camping. But now we try to settle and camp, put our camp in the, in the public space like, like this and, and with other people. Because for us, camping was uh, something very social and uh, where we are, everybody is different. And we try to build for uh, i don't know whatever it takes and how many days we decide to, to make a settlement for ourselves like living a, a sustainable community and uh, i would say a temporal temporal architecture so that led to public spaces and uh, that is why maybe why it's for micro scale to macro impact that will that is our topic uh, today in, in this panel session and uh, it will be shown now so uh, the second part is between uh, three and three, offer an initiative that should be uh, uh, between production, activism, and education in our design and architecture throughout small spatial interventions we, we, we've done with, uh, with citizens. So, in, in three our projects, uh, offer a playground, watchtower, and uh, in space of freedom, they are similar but yet different in some way, uh, which I will show now. So, the first one was that this. Uh, uh, Otvoren a playground project built uh, under the youth of bridge in town of Čačak in Serbia in 2016 and it was our first project. So we, 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 we as this is our hometown and this, this park is on the river bank and there is this pedestrian bridge so we, we it's very common to us this place. So we knew that there is this uh, this in, uh, section, this gap between uh, two parts of the park that that should be joined somehow, and people were avoiding this this uh, area because it was uh, full of rubbish and very neglected and in, in one word awful. But uh, that was inspiring for for us. So we set the camp there and uh, and uh, activate people, citizens, children mostly, youth, uh, and then through them, their parents, their professors, and, and teachers. 
So how we did done uh, how we've done this? It was to first like uh, it was some kind of architectural thing. So through these maps, cognitive maps, uh, which were sent to the people, to, to the children in the schools, high schools, elementary schools, to, to their teachers, parents, to to put, to draw, to write ideas, to do whatever they want with that space, and that led us uh, to workshops we've done in cultural center of Chachak also on this uh, actual spot under the bridge during the festival uh, and we got so many ideas at the end uh, and that would be good, good database for uh, what we can do next in, in, in that space so having that in mind we, we then we had a clear what we will do in the creating the place phase which contained all discarded and recycled materials we came to uh, uh, gather together, and what we and we, which we put them in these workbooks and gave them again to to make mix and match all those things, and how and what we can make with with those materials, and at the end uh, also we we we, we uh, the 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 professional workers who were engaged in, in this part with us creating uh, and cutting the elements into pieces that could be easily assembled later with the citizens and to be safe in, in a way so at the end we, we organized this workshop uh, and uh, with all we collected and designed with them we, 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 we put it in one project that is called offer and a playground the theme is playground, but it's not only children's playground. The playground was the process itself for making this uh, uh, place under the bridge. So it had swings, it had bench with, with bicycle rack, it had uh, some uh, grandstand plants and, and even the bird, bird houses. I will mention uh, later why. Uh, and that was that first project under the bridge. So later on, we, uh, when we done that, we were called from uh, people from Valjevo and Vilcibara to, to intervene in this uh, public space, uh, which is abandoned and it is a car, car, car camping uh, site from socialist Yugoslavia, I think. So it was very uh, mistreated and abandoned and they wanted to reactivate somehow this space. So with uh, uh, conversations with them and with uh, analysis, analysis we've done in, in that area what we have uh, of other uh, functions and and and, uh, and the children resort, resort was uh, next to that place so again with the help of that children and with the people who invited us we, we together came across to this watchtower which uh, except being watchtower <coughs> Uh, to, to watch a beautiful landscape uh, for people. It's not uh, so much anth uh, anthropocentric, uh, I would say, uh, as a design, bec uh, because this huge roof uh, uh, there has uh, contains a large uh, bird feeder. So for us, it was important that it's a place and home on, not only for people and children who will walk by and, and, and take uh, uh, swinging there. Uh, underneath it is, it is also for the uh, bird uh, bird floor uh, fauna which is there so we uh, uh, when we build that again it was some kind of reverse project now because they uh, wanted a building uh, we, we made these cognitive interactive uh, worksheets and get, give to the children to to make the future uh, surrounding of the watchtower so but again the similar uh, method and also, that additional theme I, I mentioned is what uh, is additional education. So again, with the professors from schools, we made these cards about birds who inhabit this area uh, of and these mountains in that part of Serbia. And it was some kind of information education about birds, but also the drawings of, uh, of the birds. So it was given, given to all the children who were very uh, happy to to have that and to learn something more besides the architecture, but it's, it was important how, how design itself and everything we do, it's not, uh, it is constantly in overlapping with, with other things and other knowledges, I would say. So, and the last one of these uh, uh, participatory projects was uh, 
it's not the last one, the last one here on the presentation. <laughs> also in, uh, in Space of Freedom. Uh, and uh, th that was uh, done uh, as a part of uh, open call, call for ideas that was held, that is held, was held by uh, days of architecture Sarajevo. And uh, they, uh, 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 since the, the, the competition was a call for ideas and it's nothing, it, it wasn't something that would be built it's more like uh, they wanted to see the ideas of architects and uh, what could what they do in this uh, space, which is Bob and Sledge track built for 1988, uh, for 1984 Winter Olympics in Sarajevo. So, and, and, and we, we all know here what happened after that and, and how it was demolished and it came through rough and tough uh, uh, ages through these decades, but uh, now it's, it's, a, it's a kind of a walking park for the citizens of Sarajevo on the mountain Trebevich. And uh, they wanted to see what is the uh, future for this track and, uh, and they call this competition space of freedom and again, uh, since this uh, competition was so loose and free to to, 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 to submit anything you want, we we felt that uh, space of freedom is not something uh, that we can decide. Just two of us or three of us as an architect, space of freedom is something uh, we, we should decide with uh, as many people as we can uh, gather in, in, and submit our, our project because freedom is may be different for, for everybody here. So again, at one point we, we have those maps, the, 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 the participants uh, interact on those maps, they gave uh, their, their ideas. Also we went and visited the track and we done a, a small spatial intervention there, like some kind of guerrilla action, but it was just one part of our uh, a competition proposal. So we said we had these maps from from participants. Uh, uh, we are we've been analyzing how people use it today, and we've done our uh, intervention. What could be uh, beside walking and uh, uh, track and a uh, track for bicyclists and uh, wheel luggage. So, uh, and uh, after that, we've done our uh, design. Uh, design suggestions on the right. So all of that together was a, a, a submission material for competitions. And that was a, a, some kind of pioneering thing to act in a competitions when we, you have a freedom, you, you maybe you don't need to think just for yourself uh, as a designer, you, you can just uh, in, uh, put others in the, uh, in the process too, even though the, 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 uh, it is a, uh, Call for uh, architectural competition. So that was uh, it. Uh, and the swing effect. Yeah, it's important for, for us because it spontaneously began on the first uh, on the first uh, workshop and the first project under the bridge. And uh, the all of participants, uh, if, uh, like he say, like people say here, from seven to seventy-seven years, <laughs> were uh, to totally pleased to, to, to have the swings hanging over the bridge and to, to use them. So they asked, uh, when they asked, asked us to, to build the, the, the watchtower, uh, somehow they wanted to incorporate the swing there. So it was the, 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 in the floor plan, the, 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 the uh, ground level was the, uh, defined for the swing. And the upper is for watching and the, the, the third one is for birds and here, uh, on, the, on the right, it is our uh, our intervention in the Bob track uh, with with uh, traffic sign uh, swings on the track. So, and that was that uh, one of the three parts of the competition. And uh, somehow this this element be, uh, become our uh, ready-made uh, ele uh, uh, element of communication uh, instrument for pointing out and mapping the space, the, the problem in the space that can be turned into a potential. And, and, the, and the, 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 the element that invites and that, that's it. So how it happened, for example, here, this is uh, in, uh, one individual, uh, individual action that we've done uh, many years ago, but it's one of my favorites because it's very, uh, I would say, uh, activistic in a, in a kind of uh, has that street art elements and, 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 and uh, sends big message. 
It's called in reality. Why? Because at that year we were uh, the salon of architecture in Belgrade, uh, representing our work uh, with Trotwell and initiative in the in the in the subject uh, reserved for uh, experiment and research in architecture. But uh, as since the theme was in reality, and we, and we were showing one reality, our realities we we lived in the past two years. We asked ourselves uh, then, as a young uh, architect uh, activist, what is the reality today? What is the reality of the of the place uh, uh, where we are uh, presenting our, our work? And what is the reality about this space now? And what is the reality between this memory of of, the, of that park and this woods, this literal woods in the park, forest, and now uh, what it became and where, where it grows? today in, the, uh, in these times where we need this wood very much. And uh, what's happening to the park and in, in, in the old city in this country, for example, uh, overnight. Because today we, we can have a park and tomorrow without our knowing we, we, we won't have a park. Or the, the trees are missing or some objects are missing too. And this object was uh, 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 was something like a needle in our in our eyes because and it is also mentioned here on the right that, that, that that's the photo for for the uh, for the salon of architecture catalog and there are texts uh, about uh, uh, about uh, yeah, uh, about things being uh, this uh, about things disappear so this thing it's also disappeared by night, and it is made by our architect uh, Ignat Popovich, and it is a, a, a little more modernist, modernist uh, miniature, like a jewel. For example, it was a gas station, and we can see how it's transformed over time. But uh, that 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 particular object was uh, could be uh, used differently. Uh, I think it, it could have another, uh, maybe at, at that moment, another function or something. Uh, so we, we just wanted to point out that the things are missing over the night and what is the reality, real reality of that space. So you can see uh, down there on the left that the people, uh, that, that's from the internet picture uh, from the about same time, that people were planting new, new trees in the park uh, after they lost some like on the picture too. And for us, it was that intervention on the opening night of the salon. So we just uh, put this, uh, we, we, we felt like now they, uh, somebody uh, at some point put this bin, recycled bin on the park, on the, on the corner of the park. So we, felt, we, we thought now we, we lost that corner, that uh, uh, famous corner of the park. We lost its morphology, everything. It's only one recycled bin. Uh, luckily, it's recycled. <laughs> so uh, we replaced this uh, plan as a ghost of, a, of, a, of, a, of, the, of this station, of this mod modernistic jewel, and uh, put again our thing as a, as a, as a, as a, uh, as a instrument of communication, our communication to, to, to you, to everybody. So that would be it. That would be our uh, conclusion. What is conclusion and the construction of everything I've said and showed? So I've showed you how what well I know from concept to projects became an initiative between production, activism, and education. All that things combined together through through different medias, art, design, architecture, or overlapping everything of, of them, and how it is ecology for us. Uh, and why, uh, so why uh, to answer why we are here and invited today so that ecology we, we, we can put in three groups like ecology of space by choosing an activation of abundant neglected unused misused or abused space ecology of matter by choosing a, a tool and incorporating of a, a use recycle ready-made or a mix methods and, or, and materials and uh, most important, the impact, and uh, that that's why from micro scale to macro uh, uh, impact, or, or I, I can't remember now, but it's a college of mind. And by choosing and acting through activism, education, participation, inclusion, and uh, what we do today, 
and with all of you and with participants and uh, how it will echo in the future. And that's something that is not physical, it's more uh, uh, intellectual and uh, spiritual, I would say. And that's the starting point for ecology. So that's it, thank you. Sorry for English, uh, Mershav, because uh, I haven't spoke, been speaking this for a while. You'll see now. <laughs> 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 Lich. Yes. Lich, Lich. Almir. <laughs> Hello, my name is Diana Stupa from EGGS, UNBL, <laughs> from Banja Luka, Bosnia Herzegovina. Uh, we have tried to do something echo there. I didn't even know it is echo until Anna told me it is echo. Diana, come here. Okay. <laughs> and what, what, what have we done? Uh, year 2019. Uh, uh, we were call, called by the municipality and uh, major to form a team called MI team. That means we, like we together all. Me team to produce some public spaces designs. And we go to the meeting and they told us, please people, 12 of you, can you um, take a few public spaces and make some good designs? Uh, small spaces, small designs for Dujit is we said, okay, we'll think about it. And you are thinking about the month. Yeah, sorry. You just stand by the Oh, the it's too hard. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm I know, sorry. I know. Okay, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> okay. She will do her best. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we we had some meeting, that, that's us. Uh, that me team or we team consists of 12 practitioners, engineers, uh, civil engineers, uh, landscape designers, architects, and some IT developers. Um, and we said, okay, what are we doing here? Do we really need to design some small space? Look at these brains here. Let's make some machines, some apparatus, something big for creating a lot of spaces in whole town. <laughs> okay, and we've done it. There's the names, I don't know if I, uh, the, the, main, the main man is Dr. Milinko Stankovic. Uh, he he uh, collects us all. And there was also uh, me, Vladimir Djordjic, Tanya Tukia, Jelen Stankovic, Dubravko Aleksic, Maria Wilhelm, Jana Tupalovic, Dario Kupreshat, Goran Mitic, Zora Karan from the NG, uh, NGO, and after that, Dan Todorovic, Marko Beric, Ognin Vidovic, Dr. Sajin Tankovic. Uh, that, that's all 16 people at the end after digital thing. And we said, okay, we want to make designs. We'll design the system. And we tried to design last year two books, five projects, and digital platform for the whole city. That was our, on our mind for one year. Okay. And we said, oh, why to do that on the small city center? Let's make it wider. Then we take the wide center of the one. This is Banja Luka. I'm sorry, I'll be here. Uh, this is Banja Luka and the city center. Okay, I have it. Oh, no, no, no. This is pedestrian zone in Banja Luka, like this area here. And we try to look for the small public places. We were looking for public places. We're looking for small. And we try to analyze and categorize this. 
First of all, we noticed problems, uh, public waste problems that every city in this region had. It is, um, people don't think that that space belongs to them. It belongs to major or someone else. They're not connected with that space. That spaces are don't views. Uh, there is no um, uh, planned program or function for that spaces. Just last, they just live like that in our cities. Also, the, um, uh, the uh, plants didn't recognize public spaces. Plants recognize individuals' needs, investors' needs, but public spaces always left like some dark spots. After that, we're trying to find out what is the public space, and it's really hard to find out what is public in our town. I don't know about what you are talking about. It's hard to find what is public, what is not public. And we were doing that, we are analyzing for that for days. And of course, now we're talking about theory. We, we read, we've read a lot of books. <laughs> no, we didn't. We read a lot of books earlier, but find out that we need these principles here from the right side to put in our context in Banyaluka. We need democratically town, everyday practices, temporary adaptability, simultaneously mass is small, and identity is Banyaluka town. That's here from the left side, there's principles. On the right side, there's a problem in Banyaluka. And we, we made a book. 315 pages, open source, everyone can take it. It's on Cyrillic right now, but I think the Latin version will be very soon. Um, and we make some methodology, some apparatus for designing public spaces. It could be used in Banyaluka or it could be used anywhere in Balkan because we all of us have some same problems. Uh, small interventions team, uh, decided to um, make methodology for that consists of three parts, new apparatus, new implementation, and new realization. For apparatus, for the first step, we uh, did some type of morphological researches, like uh, shape of the, uh, of the place. It is point, pocket, capital, room, field, or corridor. We consider the uh, size of the place from extra small to extra large. Uh, it means the time, price, and the uh, size. And we uh, consider five teams that uh, could be that spaces that we find out already that could be developed. And teams want restructures, infrastructure, water, uh, small forms or small scale forms and urban patterns. Also, we had experts in our team for these five teams. That was easy. You do that, you do that, you do that, and everybody produced their piece of job, part of job. Their part of job was to find out one spot or capillar or pocket to find uh, good primer. Uh, example, and to give some directions, how could those what they saw on the, in the town could develop. This is not design solution. This is some, this, this is just a way that it could be developed. Later we will produce design solutions, okay. And after that, we acupuncture it. We met all the things from that card, and we got about 150 spots, capillaries, pockets, fields, uh, showed in this, and we made out something called cardiogram, like, okay, I will do this route. This is the five catalogs from five experts with the potentials of, 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 of existing places. Um, other thing that we want to do, okay, we did research about what we have there, about shapes, sizes, potentials, but who will do this and who will do this? It should be done by city, professionals and citizens. 
a wise meeting that meeting is moderator or catalyzator of all uh, changes. Uh, we decided to, to be here between bottom up and top down principles, uh, between city and the citizens, and try to coordinate all the processes that will be shown later. We uh, tried to develop some um, mechanisms and tools to implement uh, some design solutions to relocations. Uh, this is mechanisms, mechanisms of co-design. It is workshop, studio design workshop. It is competition that could be public, that could be invite, or open public or just inviting. And here we have something called urgent uh, meeting design. It's just urgent because earlier we said we don't want to be designers. Uh, we have mechanism of constructions uh, by workshops, construction workshop, and Radna Aktia. Huh, Radna Aktia means that people are volunteer to work together in the space and nobody doesn't pay them. And it's from the socialist and communistic strategies, and we like that word. Uh, okay, mechanism of financing, collective financing, um, donation, budget, and that has been asked for. Okay, whatever. And we, the new thing that we brought here was um, mechanism of digital participation. Every project has some. Uh, kind of digital corresponding with public or with citizens or with professional. Uh, this is uh, some kind of way, way is not one way, it's uh, uh, multitasking between all the steps all the time. But if we finished all uh, the uh, typo morphological base, and if we finished all the mechanisms that we have, like a catalog, now we can find some um, projects or designs that could be implemented. There is about 60 projects that had, uh, uh, that, that were valued by metrics, mapping, actors, mechanisms, budget, uh, time, and procedures. This is complicated table that value, valuing every every potential intervention. After that, we make some criteriums to say, okay, which interventions are the best? And uh, we have discussed it with the uh, major and municipality. Uh, it was very uh, interesting to be on cardiogram, to use different mechanism and tools, to, to have normal uh, procedures and uh, budgeting. Which, which is clear. And we made five pilot projects, package two, water versus plastic, three passages, clean the city in small scale. Package two is a project uh, in the city center, Banyoluka, Bethesda Street. There was urgent meeting design for 10 days uh, that we should make some um, new design for this square because Firstly, there was planned to be a road here with the cars. Then we just, we, how many, Ognian was part of that team also. There was a team from five people. We had about 10 or 14 days seven to, to days. seven to 10 days to make some changes. Uh, by the way, the machines were on the street and waiting for us in that time. We did something. We stopped that cars. We put nice something, symbol of the town, okay. Not something spectacular, but we are not here as designers. We're designers to system. Okay, this is what we have now. Without the street, is very nice. Okay, the second, uh, the second project pilot, pilot was water versus plastic. Uh, this project uh, called all of us to leave that plastic bottles and to make some system of the water supply pipes, uh, public pipes or public fountains on every 500 meters, I think. We make some net 
of the uh, water, water facets, public water facets. And we also wanted to try the mechanism of open um, competition for the young architects and artists. And we wanted to, uh, for that to be made by the nations. This is the results of the open competition. I think there was about 27 solutions and you write, pick up three. Uh, that three were on the vibrant community of the city and the citizens, about 1,000 and 1,700 people voted for this solution to be their symbol of the town, the new town facet. This is the drawing of that. And uh, this is not real. Uh, the, the, this project did, there was 2020, we never did it. Okay. <laughs> Everything stopped. <laughs> new, new round. Third project called Three Passages. It's also in the Banyaluka Center's pedestrian zone. Uh, there is three passages here. How does it look? That's in real, real in the center. It looks really bad. This one also smells real, real bad. And we thought we can make something new there, but topic not we, like me. We can uh, make, we can bring artists to do something. Uh, we wanted to, uh, we selected six artists, young artists from Banyaluka mm -hmm. to give us ideas and pay them for the ideas. It's called a competition, enlightening competition. After that, uh, Jirai selected three of them and we did it. This is the first passage from Milit Petrovic Sejeta Konjevic. It is called Kuar Vez. Hmm? Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, this is um, Zeta Paich. She made a 3D painting. You know, it's like you're walking to do paint. And this is Ragoslav Malinovic. It is installation, unstable. We have this unstable floor that uh, work like a swing on this way and make some uh, losing the ground. Why, why are you now again uncomfortable, but uncomfortable in another way, not the smell. Uh, on every project there is a, how, the, how much does it last about uh, uh, in August, we started with preparing design and constructing, con it was constructed in, at October till November, 2019. Uh, this is the hardest, it looks very, very mm, easy, uh, cleaning the city, haha, <laughs> some people come and clean the city, that's very easy, no, it's a very serious project. Uh, serious design that we all that points here is points where people need to do something in different t-shirts. Uh, we, we need to prepare it for three months to make that uh, working action, no working action, working action, okay. Uh, and um, after the result was that about 150 people uh, did participate in that. They were painting benches, um, making, um, taking out some furniture that doesn't belong there, uh, cleaning the gums, uh, planting new rosemary. Some kids were involved making some new pockets here. There was about, uh, ah, there is a 222. Um, participants and uh, uh, before some before action and 144 in action that day a lot of uh, um, what is it? a lot of companies were involved too and it was very complicated action uh, small scale we we were looking for the design that will develop construction workshop and we did it in um, partnership with ICP, that's the Center for Research of Space, the, as its NGO organization. Um, they had a project that students of architecture and civil engineering did before, and they needed um, 
space um, and the budget and the procedures for to to make it then we together uh, make procedures funds and uh, logistic and dynamics for making this open amphitheater on that university in Manaluka. Uh, there is how did it look at on the end if someone is boring have a lot of time and new Serbian could compare all the um, all the pilot project package to other uh, whatever package, packages in the city on small scale uh, by metrics, mapping mechanisms and actors or by uh, funds, uh, people, numbers and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. By my, I think that the most successful there was three passages that um, it means that competition with inviting targeting concrete people is better than open for, for my opinion than open competition sometimes and i think the cleaning the city has a potential to be every year activity uh, in our city this is the future never happened new new project this is the future never happened uh, that was happened. UNDP hackathon, the second prize never never gave us the funds for the digital uh, digital uh, digital platform. But okay, we did it. We did one book and half other. We did five projects and we started the digital platform. That's okay for our year, I think. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. And uh, I think that we had an opportunity to listen to the way that public space can be also uh, an actor in uh, this eco-friendly um, uh, uh, friendly approach to built environment and to architecture, but not only from the architectural point of view, but actually we introduced here citizens, volunteers, uh, kids, uh, also physicians and all other parties, but I think that uh, it's very interesting that actually the public space itself became the mediator for um, um, uh, widening the perspective of how we can learn and be better in, uh, in our space. So now I would like to ask if audience have some questions for the participants. And I think because we are here uh, in the small space, we don't have to transfer and now sit here for the discussion. If you want, we can. Huh? Do you want? No? no. Uh, okay, <laughs> so please ask uh, if you have some question for the participants. Hmm? I have a question. Okay. Uh, regarding the algae. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, I don't know if it's really a question, just maybe a comment. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems interesting uh, that uh, since it's an artificial system and it deals with fluids, with air and, and water, uh, it seems to be the, it seems to be able to draw the air from the most polluted parts and micro area and draw it and, and uh, maximize its let's say cleaning potential uh, not just but uh, any air that happens to be around the device but uh, to draw it from the most polluted air it seems interesting that the point of intake is somewhere else not really on the on the apparatus itself that's one thing and uh, also what seems to be uh, a potential or maybe in integration with uh, other living organisms, uh, species of living organisms. Uh, it's interesting. It reminds me, uh, I don't know if you uh, if you're acquainted with this example, it reminds me uh, somewhat um, so called uh, living machines, so living machines of the John Todd from the United States in the 1970s and 80s, uh, where he used to purify actual water, not to the of the air and always uh, insisted on using the uh, as large as possible uh, pool of organs and species and uh, also uh, all the tanks that he used were uh, always made specifically transparent in order to act in reality 
So uh, in reverse, I would say that uh, it seems that there is potential to also control the type of clients uh, for other purposes as well. And we can also, uh, we don't have to use, for example, the human work, we can use the work that's already in some ways going to get saved uh, or something like that. And have complex systems that will also have uh, algae uh, that will work their job in other systems. Is it possible to tell like an inlet in some other location? In this case, the inlet is at the bottom of the system and it's um, it's uh, exposed to the ship, so um, it's very polluted area. So I think that they hit the target there, but otherwise, it can be far away. That these pumps are now a very low consumers of energy, very cheap, so it can be done. Uh, regarding the, the use of other other species, uh, what happens is that you introduce uh, the there, you introduce different pieces from the end. So you uh, we, we, uh, a part of the project was to select the optimal algae. So the, the optimal species that would be efficient, resistant to high low temperatures, uh, low intensity light, high intensity light uh, pathogens, and we found such species that and also it gets to be of nice color and it, it um, the appearance is very important when you want to use it, something in public space. So, so it, it has to be like semi gender But it, uh, what, what happens is that from air, you get different uh, fungi, bacteria, other algae. So basically, uh, in time, we, we, we develop like in a specific ecosystem. So this is uh, interesting from the, uh, my point of view because we, we basically generate like a new ecosystem within the city that is uh, related to, to the things that are present in the air. And we are even thinking of, of, of uh, like describing the like urban uh, air uh, bioma. Mm -hmm. You know, what is present, uh, uh, not, not like the bacteria that is like and, and viruses, but what are they are living in, in the air? This, that would be some, something that is like a pure an issue. So uh, it can be done in that way, but uh, then we would do basically the nice experience. So from the point of me as a uh, scientist and experimenter, it, it is very interesting. But uh, uh, the, uh, even this culture that is like mono, mono space spatial, it, uh, it, uh, it, it, it can crash. So it is fragile. And if you develop like a system, it will be very dynamic. And who knows what, what, what emerges from it? But it is an interesting thought. And basically, you can do this by making like a green pools, like a green fountain. And it, you will have even you know, fish there and ducks living on it. You will have a very really, very really like ecosystem. But this is like a small uh, unit for uh, uh, small urban pockets where there, there is no room for other green. So uh, it is an interesting thought. We, we can introduce maybe uh, maybe macroalgae as well. We can do Thank you. So, I have one question for adults and uh, I'd like to know. Uh, in, uh, since uh, first and uh, third algae that you mentioned the funds, uh, did you have any funds in the trees project that you implemented? That's the first question. And the second, since uh, your projects are very interesting, since they are done with and for the community, uh, what, in which state are they now? Did the community continue to? Uh, like maintain them or at least use them or demolish it. What is the state of those uh, public spaces right now? Great question. <laughs> <laughs> because in the first one, well, the first project, it wasn't funded. It was uh, we were young. It was totally our uh, need and desire to plant. It's a, the knowledge we have and we, we, we have. So it was more uh, collecting the things we, uh, uh, together and, and, and with our knowledge and helping them to, to, to design something else. And, uh, so the first one, it wasn't funded, it, it was uh, cycled, uh, even though funded by two of us in some cases, when we pay the, 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 the some things to, to, to make the, to happen, but in, 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 the, in, in the space, the, 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 the cognitive sheets and maps uh, were paid for, for the people who were making festival because somehow we, we hacked the, the festival program because they have the festival of, 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 of agriculture there and uh, 
they, they, they thought, okay, the, the urban culture, as they put it in that uh, time, wasn't just the, the drawing, the graffiti, and mur murals on the walls, which is great, but it's also something uh, else about space. So this kind of spatial intervention can intervene in space and make it functional is also part of the urban culture. So they paid for that, uh, I would say, funded that cognitive maps of sheets, workbooks, and records. The workbooks were donations uh, also, and that's it. And on the, in the mountain, the Watchtower project, we, have, we, we were given uh, materials. So they, they were, we, we are donated uh, by materials and, and that uh, things for uh, to make it and we, we those maps we put, we put the maps but uh, then again we did it again uh, we had a then we had a big influence without with, with our colleagues and, and other people we would call them we, they come up there also the the, 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 the community from Valio was uh, very much involved so we did it picking two of us we did it there again voluntary. Like a working action, I might say. <laughs> then the, 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 the third one was a, was a competition. Uh, with, uh, with competition with the last one is totally. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm sorry, I, um, if I can go. It's very interesting because we have support in the city. We, we were doing what we want, and city major after all said, do whatever you want, to do, do, do whatever you want, okay. Um, and we didn't have funds, we project funds about, I don't know, 5,000 5, euros, I need 10. And what I do, send mail. Mm -hmm. And it worked. When you have project, when you have results, when you have what have you done already, I get whatever I want by email. Do not believe in me. <laughs> well, sometimes uh, it's, it's just like uh, uh, is it uh, sustainable in, 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 in the realm of money? Because something is uh, you have something, you have that. I want yeah. this. Males. The yeah. other the other question was what happened after that? Okay, uh, it, uh, it's gone. Except one thing, the watchtower. It is uh, uh, that car camp that it was built. Uh, it was de uh, demolished. Uh, I mean, the nature is uh, away because they built there um, some resorts. Okay, or, or maybe uh, uh, the basketball uh, camp. But it's okay. It, it, it's now it's private uh, private property. But uh, and, and the, the, the whole watchtower is removed from the camp to the to the mountain top. Now it's maybe it's in heaven. You know. <laughs> it's, it's a nice place for that uh, object. So <laughs> all that's the only thing that's right. Everything else is uh, it's uh, of course uh, temporal, uh, temporal or, uh, on purpose or uh, as a part of the event. But the first project on the bridge is just uh, some of the, of the people were caring about it for some period of time, maybe a year. But after that, uh, everything. Uh, Go in uh, previous stage. Uh, now it's uh, as it before us. Maybe uh, yeah, we can talk about the uh, project map of ours. Mm. Yeah, uh, uh, step by step. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, more questions? Okay. Uh, in the presentation, you said that you had uh, support from the city, but. Uh, Sorry. Um, in October, yes. 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 Um, did you have any support in the city? Like, was something that you built on public space? Did you need commissions? Because uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, that project, uh, well, we, uh, it was the first one. It was uh, for us, it was pilot project. We didn't know even if it will uh, can come to light. So, so we. we uh, we had that uh, kind of uh, uh, support by the people who, who are making festival, who were making festival at that time to, to make our final workshop and the assembly of the things on the days of the festival because it was good for us to, to have that critical mass of people to join. And, um, and, and that, that, that's the way how we did it as a part of, uh, uh, it's not the semi part of the festival, I would say. 
because of the people. The, the city then the, the festival itself was uh, kind of funded in you know, all that ways, but we were piloting with this and uh, maybe they nobody had a trust that we, we can manage we can manage to do that really because we were talking that we are doing and that we and can we part participate yes but everybody was in their own segments of organization and they were like okay they, they will make something if they make it it's good if they don't uh, we, we we have our program and we, we've done that, that year we've done the uh, i think most uh, valuable program because every other aspects of the program was they were arguing it's not good but they said oh only you did the, the, the right job to, to the end and uh, and it was very for us it was very Increasing, but then again, uh, after a year, you can see what is happening to the place you do, you, you build, and you ask yourself, should I build it here or should I move on the mountain this year and forget about town and this town in this, in this particular moment? Because we, that, that, that's it. Maybe, uh, maybe you can, uh, yes, I may as do that in the city, but uh, it's, it's uh, yeah, the policies are very strange sometimes, uh, and, and, and where the, the funds go, what is the priority? Uh, no, no, uh, the nations. For, for uh, nations, okay. Yeah, but uh, are, uh, the yeah, okay. Treasure, but, uh, yeah. can we do that? Should they? Uh, no, uh, Guerrilla is the only way to add that. From the city, from the other. It's, it's good if you, if you if you get something, but uh, yeah, it's, you, you it's, 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 it's okay to communicate. But you did for us. You don't have to for our yeah. 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 I understand where it comes from, but um, from someone who maybe have, has an idea to do something in their own city, uh, like. If it's going to be supported, do I need to do something with the authorities? Do I need the support from the city hall? Or just you know, just don't do expect it. any uh, uh, that kind of uh, you can expect no recipes. Yes, come, it's it's come. Come. It's there's some it's problem, but don't expect any. Like, that's it. That's it. too much, uh, too much energy you can spend uh, by uh, drilling, by drilling to do something. And and you want just to do something. So uh, this was that uh, example then. You would like now to do properly to do the like, call to do uh, right. Yeah. But but then it, it was just drilling and we were losing energy to drill instead of do it really. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. So it's like that. Yeah. And that's not very good. I think that, uh, there, there's, there's no recipe. You have to try it yourself. Yes, please. No, two things. One thing is uh, uh, law, like uh, local magistrate is like a public law. So when you install something, it is uh, wise to have like uh, to know what you're doing. Is it legal and to get the permits and to see what what can be done. So our system was basically installed by the municipality of uh, Stalingrad because they they are allowed to put branches in the street. We are not. And uh, then we got support from that. And for these next two parts, uh, we, we have export of Ujice, but we're looking for the municipality that to support the next one because we have to invest some time. Although it's a gift from uh, some donator, they have to invest some time. They have to appoint a person that will be at our disposal to tell us, okay, this is the location. Uh, we can get like plans or topographic cards or something like that. This, this is one, one component. The other component is maintenance. What I noted in this system, if you have one that makes the next room, you will have 20. So it is important to have the maintenance. And the idea is, for example, if you are making this installation, it's good, it's useful. Uh, try to make a plan for the maintenance. Maybe you can involve like a local, local, local public school, uh, discuss maybe with, with some professor of biology uh, to make like a uh, class of ecology and clean the area. Because when you start, when the demise start, when demolition start, if you go in that direction irreversibly. It's important to have some plan regarding the maintenance. Otherwise, it will be soon uh, like uh, disappointing and. It, it is very, very great that you still have a spirit, but if you want to see your things living, think about maybe getting some money for the maintenance. Otherwise, everything will be solved. You know what? What? The, what? What would this city looking like 
if you wouldn't have like a, a common service. In, in two days, you would be leaving the garbage up to our max. Yeah. So it's important to have, if you're less sometimes, also try to make it work with maybe maybe some class. Maybe there is like a biological echo, echo section in the in the in the primary school, and they would like to come two one, once in two months to clean. And then you would have a viable. viable yeah. Yeah. yeah, there was a uh, like a, a wall with a, a green wall in one of uh, uh, you know, schoolyards, and while the uh, echo uh, echo club was working there at the elementary school there was a teacher willing to maintain the the wall there was a wall uh, the minute the teacher actually retired uh, next year the wall was dismounted so <laughs> it is the maintenance that is very important so uh, we have to think about it okay well thank you thank you all uh, I, I think that we can go to the next panel and then we will have a break the next panel is a little bit shorter so we have two participants and those two participants are really interesting because uh, in my opinion they started uh, they, they 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 provided us uh, they will provide us with the presentation of two experiments so uh, the first one Ogden Shukal assistant professor coming from uh, Banja Luka, also um, HGF faculty. His research and practice falls between landscape architecture and green narrative architecture. And then on the other side, we have Katarina Škrbić that, that graduated architecture bachelor studies at the University of Belgrade and master studies at Politecnico di Milano. She is the founder and director of Bazovsky Innovative Architectural Practice and Startup. Bazovsky is a company founded in March 2021, based in Svenska Mitrovica, Serbia. Bazovsky is proactively engaged in design, construction, and rent sustainable off grid cabins nested in nature, offering a fine place to escape, recharge, and reconnect. So please open. I failed to provide my biography, but Anna jumped in. And today I will not be talking about uh, the interface between landscape architecture. <laughs> no, a little bit, yes. Yeah, yeah, since it's a conservatory, yes. So uh, I'm here with a little bit of the, uh, how do I change it? Uh, the arrows? Arrows, I think yeah. arrows. Okay. So I'm uh, here with a little bit of the old news. Uh, since the, the, this uh, building was built, let's say, during the previous decade. And it is an old news, but somehow it's, it has some alert, some aura of interest around it. Uh, well, uh, let's say I exaggerate a little bit, but I, on a regular basis, uh, decline. Uh, uh, the media to talk about it and uh, tell them it's it's an old news asking about something new, uh, and it is uh, an interesting uh, position for me right now to revisit it and to revisit what I have learned. Uh, I will uh, spare you the letters for the most time and go with the images uh, and talk generally about. It. So uh, this is a, a conservatory. A conservatory is let's say an English term for a greenhouse. We can call, call it a greenhouse, but we don't see any transparent uh, surface here. We don't see any glass and, uh, or any such thing, but it's actually, it's, uh, he's, it's a northern side, which is made from natural materials, let's say, and it is southern side is exposed to the south and accepts, admits light inside. So uh, I never quite liked it when the glass came in. I liked it when it was open. Uh, but actually, it, it is made. Let's let's make a, a brief overview of its materials. Uh, it's made on the rubble and stone foundations. It has walls that are uh, that is a combination of walls made from uh, mud, sand, straw wood and glass with a little bit of the green roof on top that we'll see later. Um, 
besides that, that was a starting point for me to, to enter the field of natural materials. And it was a great experience for me, a great experiment for me. Later on, uh, I participated in some other events. Uh, right now, I am, let's say, in design phases to design some buildings for these materials. But actually, I was several times I, I was invited uh, to other people's designs uh, to be an, uh, a consultant for natural materials. On the left side, you can see a straw bale student pavilion in Sarajevo that wasn't quite a happy ending story. Uh, after some time, the, the university authorities demolished it. Um, and on the right side, a little bit uh, different. Uh, this is the reconstruction of uh, Dante Chopin's uh, uh, birth house, uh, child home, uh, that is a famous writer that probably some of you know. Uh, it was reconstructed uh, sorry, recently. And I was on, on both of these cases, I was a consultant for natural materials. So, but I was, I'm always asked about uh, the, the conservatory, yes. And also, uh, uh, starting where, with this building and my other interests in natural materials, I also uh, started in our university. I started a course that runs for several years now on natural materials, where we do many things, but I fail to photograph them. Okay. So you have to take me at my word. So uh, this building uh, really. Uh, when I revisit it like, like this, is something that uh, I can't quite process precisely even, even today. It's not for me, let's say, I, I really tend to sit outside my personal body of work. Uh, even when I look at my computer, it stands completely outside of the, any folders that deals uh, with my designs of any kind. I don't quite know why, and I'm not sure if I'm going to change it, but I do see it outside of it. And if you ask me about my buildings, that's the last, last thing that I remember. I don't regard it as a piece of regular architecture for some reason. And uh, what are these reasons is, for me, it still has an aura of experiment. It was made not to design, but to build a great distinction for me. And it was to try out and only hope that it succeeds. I tested materials. And I also tested quite esoteric combinations of materials. Probably many of you heard about mud buildings, about, uh, let's say, uh, cob buildings, about straw bale construction, wooden construction, and everything. But, for example, I chose to do so-called hybrid of bale cob that I had to dig for really esoteric uh, 1990s uh, yearbooks to find recipes. How do you do it? It was a load-bearing wall that combines uh, the load-bearing and insulating effects of both cob and uh, straw bale. So it was a testing place for many different things and it was intended to be a testing place for uh, much serious buildings afterwards uh, for example my own house but that uh, that remains in the future and it also it it was an experiment since uh, more uh, than with form and with architecture it dealt uh, intimately with the quality of materials and I might say, when I say quality of materials, uh, there is a really a large scope of uh, this intimately dealing with, uh, for example, uh, completely making. Uh, do I have this? No. I'll just show it. This? Ah, okay. So, for example, uh, building the walls completely with your body really mixing it, lifting it, and putting it into the wall. Uh, for example, uh, dealing with quite unexpected materials like a cow and horse dung for the mortars, for the, for the plasters on the wall, and testing them in different regimes of, of uh, precipitation, rain, 
etc. For example, cooking uh, flour or baking bread, cooking flour to make uh, adhesives and uh, uh, plastifying substances for the internal walls. Or, for example, during our uh, work uh, in this course uh, in university, really testing materials for compressive strength and, and uh, similar. I also failed the photograph, so I took uh, Wikipedia image for something that I did and never quite photographed. I don't have any, any documentation. I'm, I'm trying to reach my students from several years ago to, I, I remember I've saw them to, yes, to take pictures, so I, I'll try to find, I don't do it. Uh, why, the, there's another reason why it's hard for me to, to really put it in the proper architecture bin uh, and understand it as such. Uh, in some ways, it almost did not have a design process, which is completely outside of the way I deal with, uh, with architectural design. Mostly for me, it is complicated and, and long and uh, it, is, it deals with considering many different aspects, uh, but here it was almost a one single swipe of hand. We will make it like this. And from that onwards, it was all, uh, all, only a further development, but the whole idea, the whole uh, form, the whole concept was really made in, a, made in an instance. But uh, what's more, let's say, interesting with these later uh, developments is that I insisted almost exclusively to draw it by hand. No computers were made in this, even though its form is very convoluted, uh, it's irregular, and I used the descriptive this geometry and drafting geometry to make different projections and sections of the building and to build it from there without Rhino, without uh, SketchUp uh, add-ons, without Revit, just by pencil. And also later, during the later uh, phases of this refinement of the design, uh, I decided to do some almost esoteric things. I decided to do very specific alignments with the north and south, east and west, uh, trying to find the true north, true south, uh, making, making elaborate uh, devices in the field to measure the south, uh, the, the shadow at the precise point of the noon in our time zone, etc, etc. And also this year, later when we have room, and when it's the 22nd of December, uh, at the winter solstice, in the noon of winter solstice, we have a shadow that falls precisely on this point here and enters through the roof, through the wall and going on the other side, etc. etc. That the, the, these are not the only examples of these, let's say, strange games that I played with the building. Why it's not really an architecture compartment for me, it's also it's, uh, this kind of building originated historically, let's say, uh, among architectural outsiders. Uh, people that uh, generally sought to build in a way that they saw fit. Without uh, formal architectural education, for example, this uh, Welsh American, Jan Evans, which is a landscape architect, but actually a natural builder. And these are one of these that I, so through the internet to find these volumes of the archive from 1995, etc., etc., to find specifics on the building techniques. And uh, there I came with the in the contact with this natural building movement, which I never, at the time, I never saw as a natural extension of my uh, relationship, my partaking in architecture. To, it was something different for me, something new. Not, not an extension, not the further elaborance of architecture, but something new for me. And it has its own origins that made me uh, think the similar, in a similar way that they 
uh, used to think. What's interesting here, this, this natural building movement actually originated uh, for the most part, uh, let's say, in the areas that experience heavy logging, cutting down of trees, and they're never really uh, that much into regarding wood or, or industrially used wood as a natural material. They always sought, thought, sought how to uh, use a little bit more natural uh, alternative than that, and they ended up with the with the mud as the prime material. And also in different areas, for example, in the United States Southwest, it was, it was the use of, uh, let's say, the trash, the, the, the non-recyclable materials and, and, and similar. And also why I never really uh, put it into the Arctic is because of the, uh, the because, because I really built it with my own, let's say, bodily effort. Like uh, what you see on the left side uh, is not one little uh, example of mixing something with your foot. It was a prolonged dance every day for several weeks, for several hours every day, mixing it in place uh, dynamically with your feet, putting it up and building it into the wall. And at the end, let's say, um, I asked myself, what have I learned from this process? And there are two things. One is very specific, and that is and that I always tell to my students. Uh, when you deal with natural materials and want to sculpt the clay, want to sculpt the, the, the walls with mud, always conceptually first separate the roof from the walls. You, you almost uh, always have to deal with the two forms at once. You will never, it will never work uh, as unified in, in our climate, let's say, in Sahara maybe, but in our climate, it will never work as a unified form. It will always has to be like this. That's a specific thing. And a more general thing is uh, the tire, for my own sake and for my own use, for example, today with my clients, uh, is to have a really wide scope, a, la a large field of that, what uh, can and should be considered eco-building. And let's say at least one quadrant of that field should have a category of itself that, uh, that we can call natural. That is something quite different than only the used materials, but also the process with, uh, with which you design it, think of it, and build it. That's about it. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Katarina Shkrovic, and I'm the founder of uh, Bazovsky, of Brand Bazovsky, of Bazovsky Cabins. And uh, today I will like to share with you general whole story about my brand, uh, not just specifically about architecture, but generally about the, uh, I hope, sustainable story that we are actually trying to, to share. So uh, first of all, I would like to introduce you with the core idea and mission of, of my brand because it's actually closely related to the architecture. So who is Vazovsky? Uh, Vazovsky is actually a fake person that we invented as ideal that we would like all of us to follow. So it's actually a, a person who decided to buzz off to escape from city, from uh, modern life, from uh, stress, from noise, you know, everything that modern worlds bring, uh, brings and uh, decide to escape to the nature and uh, start the fight against this stagnant routine and generally just to return to itself. So I would like to think that like my main mission, like higher uh, mission is actually trying to solve this problem that I think it's like one of the most common problems of 21st century that's burnouts and stress. 
So we are, we are trying to help people become more like Bozovsky. And how we do that is uh, in one way through architecture because we uh, design, build, and rent uh, sustainable off-grid cabins that are nestled in nature. Uh, where idea is to uh, to offer to our clients like quick escape and uh, uh, quick fix. So the goal is not to stay like seven days and sightsee and then return tired again for the city, but actually just to stay one, two, three days and just be there and just slow down and focus on whatever is actually the, the problem of your stress, let's say like that. So that's also one of the topics for today. It's actually how with architecture we can uh, manage to like uh, affect people's mindset and perception of the present moment of the environment context generally about modern life. And I hope that in some of them actually we manage to, to make them rethink the way they live. So basically we're trying to share more, more sustainable life way of living. And um, yeah, so uh, yeah, let's go next. <laughs> so uh, in sense of our rental service, maybe already you heard for the trend glamping and we are part of that trend. And what that means is glamorous camping. So uh, by that, we are saying that we are offering to our guests everything they need for uh, comfortable stay in the nature without sacrificing luxury. And that was one of the first uh, actually challenges that I had with de designing like 15 square uh, meters unit uh, that can provide all of that. So it's really in uh, relation with user and with function. So what we have inside, I will just now show you a little bit about cabin so you can get the, the closer picture of what it is all about. So we have, uh, of course, the bed, but the whole point is the window into the nature where you actually feel like a part of that story that is happening outside, but with the security and comfort. And I think that intent, of course, you cannot have, but also not in hotel room because I think that today, like paradoxically, they are building huge natural resorts by like taking from the nature for you to be in the nature, but actually you, you end up actually disconnected in some room looking down to small nature. <laughs> so I think this is the way to go for ecotourism generally uh, in, in today's world. So there is also, of course, fully equipped kitchen with fridge, with stove, with uh, running water, everything you need for like quick meals in the nature and bathroom with hot shower, with toilet uh, that we will talk later about. So heating, cooling, uh, so basically everything you need, but so far I, I hope you already see that it's like some different uh, new experience and new accommodation that's already to our guests giving like a, a new experience, new vibe. And uh, on top of all of that, uh, we put some other elements in cabins to guide them how actually to spend time there. Uh, so I didn't mention um, we don't have Wi-Fi in cabins because the idea is to be off grid in any every way. So so from the internet. So that's why we put uh, just a box. We call it digital detox box where you can leave your phone and try challenge to be like 24 hours without phone. And by doing that, actually, you can focus on yourself or the person you brought. And we put like uh, board games, uh, mandalas, books, um, even like old school radio to be totally in less digital time. <laughs> so uh, I hope so far it's already clear the, the, the vibe we are selling, the, the, the experience we want to produce. And it's like all focused on the present moment and also on just the environment around. And that environment is really uh, actually special because all of uh, our cabins are inside the protected area, actually in special reserve of nature's assets. I don't know how many of you know, I will just say a little bit about it. So it's, um, it's for 25 years actually already protected area and really close to Belgrade and Novi Sad, uh, next to Sremska Mitrovica. And it's a small river, Zasarica, with wetland, with uh, forests and uh, meadow. Uh, and uh, a huge variety of flora found a lot of like uh, autonomous species. But what was for me interesting is that all animals are there free. And they are living day and night free uh, in almost like wild natural habitat. And so my crazy idea, of course, was to ask to put my cabins there <laughs> for, for, for them to experience that kind of habitat. But idea was um, for guests to like just go there as visitors 
without affecting the nature, just like appreciating what I saw and go home. <laughs> so uh, I, I literally went and asked uh, the, the reserve, I explained my idea after I had already one cabin done and they let me try this as experiment. And then after one month, after like a lot of good feedback and it was all fully booked, uh, we, we decided to continue with the uh, collaboration. And, uh, but of course, the idea is not to invade the space and now build hundreds of them there. <laughs> and I would like to show you now one video. I hope it will start. Uh, some click here. Uh -huh. Yes, that is actually, okay, there is no sound, so I will talk. <laughs> <laughs> so it's actually filmed by one of uh, our guests. So how they actually spend the time there. Uh, so it's for me cool because it's really showing what they experience and how they actually uh, spend the day in the nature. Well, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I don't know from uh, all these photos that it was going maybe fast. So actually from the yard of every cabin, you can experience this. This is from the yard. And what for me really cool, ironically, that uh, people are actually inside the fence and animals are free. So <laughs> you are actually in your yard and observing. <laughs> so yes, yeah, also you can like, the whole, the whole general, like whole idea of spending time is really in the nature and uh, just like slow down and return to yourself and into the nature. Also, I think the, this part, because of course I slept many times there, <laughs> but this part in the end, like when you stay there in real nature, it's a little bit scary, but like good scary, like it's really something that you cannot experience everywhere. And now I would like to just share a little bit also about the cabins itself and what, what makes them micro and off grid and actually how I, what was the process of my thoughts and design and uh, generally everything I, I managed. <laughs> so uh, this is one of the cabins um, for two persons and uh, this is for four. As you can see, they are, there are some similarities between them, uh, generally use of materials and uh, the uh, disposition of the uh, functions inside and how it's actually uh, related to the, to the surrounding. And the, both of these cabins are on the, this meadow you saw where are the horses and other animals. As you can see, like this is the, what you can see in the morning. And um, so, but what makes all of, all of cabins similar is the, this moment of micro and off grid. So with micro, why was that important is that actually they are transportable. And uh, so we put them on the trailer or on the truck, really easy, most stressful day ever when it's transported. <laughs> and um, there is no foundations. So basically the idea was also if I remove my cabin that really I don't affect nature there. When I move it, there is nothing. And uh, I even decided to put it on this uh, legs, uh, uh, lifted from the ground. Uh, to just float there and don't even impact like the, the grass under it. That is my like uh, wish. And so, as I said, because they are transportable, they need to follow some, some dimensions so they can be on the track. And generally they are around 15 square meters, but the, the width is actually uh, fixed. I mean, it cannot go a lot. And so in school, they teach you the like standards and norms, how you should like all this here. I don't even know now anymore, but like stairs this wide in toilet, you need to have this much. And when I started designing, I realized in this case of microarchitecture that doesn't work. <laughs> so really like before building my first cabin, I, I draw it on the floor in the, my yard and then check like if I can sit on the toilet, if I can move the chair. So it was really fun process and totally new. And what was interesting that, I mean, I couldn't think like I was learned, let's say like that. I needed to actually improvise. And uh, as I already mentioned, design is really in close relation with the user and with the function because you really need to think how will they spend day there? I mean, what will they need? Because there is no space for nothing they don't need. Like really like uh, every centimeter literally counts for everything to function. But also uh, design is also affecting the 
like energy efficiency because the space is really small and uh, like good insulation, uh, like which roof you will put, which windows, everything really affects uh, the, the situation inside during winter and summer. So I tried to use, I mean, it was my first project, but I tried to use like all the, the best I could, like uh, uh, wood insulation, then uh, aluminum, uh, paper glaze windows and uh, generally, yeah, to try to, 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 to help this situation. Um, also where I exp experiment uh, was also on the facade. That was my wish and I, until I didn't do it, I didn't calm down. I still don't know, was it a good choice or no, but I wanted to try polycarbonate as a facade. And the, the main reason was because the uh, idea for this cabin is to manage to like implement in any natural environment. And this material was really interesting because in some uh, angles, when you look, it actually reflects the surrounding. And when you go really close, you can see it through. And I don't know, for me, it was important that I can represent, uh, represent like my grid, that it can be clear how it was built. But also when you look from far, uh, it actually blends. So a lot of times when I need to explain guests where to go, I like show them the cabin and they don't see it. <laughs> so it's, it's cool. <laughs> and uh, in, inside two materials that I would like to mention that are like the main, uh, one is cork uh, that uh, showed up as really good uh, insulator of, well, first of all, of sound, also thermal, but also, it was guiding the whole uh, atmosphere inside the cabin and actually like uh, focusing on the on the windows, the whole space. So it worked really well. And the other was uh, natural rubber from caoutchouc uh, that I used for the floors and for the wall in, in shower since it's uh, waterproof. And that was a creative solution because you cannot put tiles because we are transporting the cabins and can break. Also, these cabins really uh, work on sun. They are really like, you see the, the movements. So you, you need to choose material that is actually working good with, with all of that. And other uh, topic for today is the off-grid. Uh, so uh, for me to put the cabins where I put them, I, I agreed, of course, with the reserve of nation, uh, re, re, natural reserve, reserves assets that they will not in any way affect the land. In that moment, I had no idea how to do it. I just said, yeah, they will have everything there. I don't need anything from you, just let me put it. <laughs> and then I started with actually, so I said, I will have water, I will have electricity, toilet, but had no idea how to do it. So first, uh, they are 100% solar powered. And um, I know, of course, the building can work on solar power, but usually they are connected to the grid and then the solar power is helping. But here I went with risk and I just put the solar panels and batteries. But the, the problem is that I need to offer my user electricity. They don't understand that, you know, they are. So in the beginning, it was funny because I didn't know how to explain them that actually consumption is important. The fridge needs to be on one, not on seven, that needs to turn the off light. Uh, and we started with like these um, uh, small like notes around the house. <laughs> and for them, it was sympathetic. And from the start, like everyone started to understand the story. We didn't have that much problems. Of course, sometimes happened that they come in the middle of night without electricity because they put AC on day to work, but okay. <laughs> and, um, so generally, it's a hard work behind the scene, but uh, so far, actually, guests understand the story and they're even helping. Like, even when they say, like, you can turn on the fan, they, they're saying, like, no, 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 we're in nature, we don't need a fan. We, so uh, from that part, really positive uh, out, out. And same goes for the water. We have a tank with limited amount. Again, we explain, yes, that they should, like, leave the long shouts for home that here is goal to like save. And again, really good feedback we got from them. And then if we go back to the topic of, of grid, uh, we are really trying to educate, uh, educate guests about living off grid. And um, even like there is not even roads to the cabins in, in that point of being off grid. So they need to like walk from parking to the, the cabins. And um, 
But the coolest part in cabin is actually compost toilet, the tribe of my cabins. And uh, so because of that, we actually managed to put them there. So it doesn't have any sewage or black uh, water tank. It's a dry water as toilet. And there are many, many types. But for example, in, in this one, inside there is like a small tank uh, where you can put stuff for composting. And uh, also it's separating urine. So actually there is not any other smell. It has ventilation and really in two years uh, we didn't get any complaints, but it was really in start for me risky how to explain, especially men on Balkan, I must say, <laughs> that they need to use this toilet. And on this toilet, everyone is equal. You need, everyone needs to sit. <laughs> so it's really, it was really a challenge. And uh, there are a lot of potentials also in this that I would use for sure, uh, like if I was building a vacation home for me, but I also needed to look as an entrepreneur. So, so far uh, I didn't do anything, but for example, uh, from produced compost, you can actually have like small bio factory where you can make actually methane, the gas that you can cook on actually. So that's how they do it off the grid. Also same with the urine, you can actually use this fertilizer and. Uh, a lot of still uh, still potentials. And so unfortunately, that's all for today. <laughs> I could go on and on on a lot of on a lot of topics. Uh, so I hope I managed to transfer to you like our story of actually sustainable uh, ecotourism and uh, what we are trying actually to achieve and, and uh, share with you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thank you very much, both of you. I think that the, those experiments are really enlightening uh, us in a way. So I would ask uh, now students to pose some questions to our uh, presenters. I think that uh, both experiments are really interesting and I guess that you will have some questions uh, for them. Yes, please. Hi. <clears throat> My name is I'm coming from Riga Technical University. I have a question for you. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, I was very really inspired uh, for your story. It was uh, so well presented uh, <clears throat> with passion and very uh, personal interest. And <clears throat> you could feel how the strategic was conceptualized and then built as well. <clears throat> and that was really great. <clears throat> but the, uh, I, I have a provocative question since um, I'm an uh, active education and architects are you know, taught to plan in advance and to <clears throat> design detail and, uh, and so uh, oh, what's your message that uh, architecture will not be necessary in future this is your method no 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 <clears throat> Uh, today, uh, uh, the short answer is that I was young. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, and I only had to do it to, to learn something about it today. Uh, I actually can do it quite well. Uh, uh, in terms of, of the design process, I, I really wouldn't do uh, design and underdevelopment in terms of the uh, uh, But uh, just, just let me get there. Uh, uh, today, I like to offer, for example, I had certain, really several, uh, how do you say, I don't want to find the bridges here, and I, I like to really offer them a broad scale of the opportunities what can be done. And uh, really go with them uh, in methodologically, methodically, uh, through the options that we can have. Architecture will do that we, in, in the end, have a, a whole project. This is a whole, but uh, in the beginning, uh, I'm talking with them with all the possible options and all, all the stuff. This is mentioned as the root of wars. Mm -hmm. So, we, we, if we want natural, we actually want, uh, okay, let's talk about the root. Mm -hmm. So, and we can talk on the most natural ones, for example, like patching, uh, all the way to just a corrugated mud and say the root is outside of the concept. 
of the natural law. If you're just there to protect you, your walls and your building will be natural. And this is the whole uh, <coughs> scope that they get to choose from, for example. So <coughs> I do see uh, a great role of architecture in there, but at the time I was what's called uh, a meal. So uh, I, I really ended uh, my education as an architect and uh, after a few years stumbled into the area of the of natural materials and I was enchanted and I didn't really uh, realize it. Mm -hmm. and that is a classic uh, example of this uh, Latin proverb um, that goes about female uh, hominem unim libri which means we afraid of a man that read only one book. <laughs> I was his guy. So I went, went into it, into it yeah. my head, <laughs> head on. And uh, only years after, I was able to recognize my own situation again inside. Thank you. Great story. <laughs> so, any more questions? I have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So I would like to point out the passion that both of you have expressed during your presentation. And Norman has shown, uh, shown him on the field. I would like to ask you, you know, were you the one who also built and constructed cabins or you had some yeah, other yeah. doctors, constructions? No, companies. actually, I was thinking, should I show it today? But I think if I let it some next presentation. So uh, first, uh, First cabin when I was building, it was like in time of Corona, it was before, and uh, still it was totally new to operate in general, only like one time. So, first I approached like some contractors, uh, general, like workers with experience, and they were all looking at me like, what is she building a container and what is this? You know? So, in the start, I get really problem, trouble, and this first cabin I did build with a uh, pool, say. On second one, I already, and this is two story I have <laughs> On the second one, I already gave up on other workers for the interior because they are late, they are, uh, we cannot find them. And I start alone, we put it like we put it in the interior of the second house I did alone. And uh, then for the third and fourth cabin, it was the plan to again organize some people, but they were not showing up. And I was waiting for two months. And one morning, I just woke up and I went to my uh, storage where I work, and uh, I just started. And I start cutting the, the wood. And uh, the guy that networks next to me, you know, what are you doing? He said, so I'm building a cabin alone. And they were like, oh, no, we are here. Can you help them? And I do that. I start, and then I try to tell me that, uh, but better. For next time. Uh, so actually, I started in like the first two days, I built one wall. Then I called them, hey, tell me who lives. Then I lived and like that. And after that, I said, I'm building a wall for cabin that's spelling. And so far, I, I did build uh, two cabins. One is still in finished. Uh, yeah. So, so I have a question. Uh, are all those cabins the same or they are custom made? Uh, and are you going to, you, you won't have a typical one, but. Uh, well, uh, since I am the, the, the yes, builder, also, <laughs> I was literally play, playing. I mean, because of course I'm like living my dream as architect doing whatever I want. So uh, these four cabins that they have, they are all different, but with idea to like find actually what's the best condition and then continue with, with that. But for example, I try like every cabin can have different type of roof. One is really mm -hmm. too slow. Mm -hmm. So we're just looking yeah. around. Uh, so, and it was real experience and I really didn't have experience in the beginning. The, there are also mistakes and, uh, and on some, I, I really just like, uh, do some crazy stuff because I wanted. Like in one cabin, we have uh, uh, like one whole side is in glass and you can open, and then you can take the bed outside in the terrace to sleep on the open sky. That is my wall to the cabin. I did it, and 
But I'm trying to calm down and continue with some um, rock <laughs> Okay. Uh, I understand. Yes. I want to uh, connect yesterday and today. Mm -hmm. uh, yesterday we're talking about how to teach young architects. Mm -hmm. And that's my, uh, I don't know, uh, main interest in life because I teach architecture from the beginning. And thinking about curriculum, master studies, ESP points, mm -hmm. and everything, I think that the harmony between theory and practical things is, is the answer. Mm -hmm. it because is. if you put to, if you dig your hands in it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and start your brain to think, to research, to read, to watch, then you learn. And only theory. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Some more questions? Actually, we have a question for Anna. And I participated in the course called the Luna. And we were talking about uh, Western materials. And uh, we got to know about uh, vernacular architecture, which is also very important for understanding, as I see it, uh, for understanding the vernacular materials because very basic, which is very painful. And during one of my researches for some of the tasks that I had for that course, I came up with the um, information that, uh, in fact, it's a um, saga, I think. They were experimenting actually or exploring the traditional way of making the traditional um, houses with the dry wall, it's opposite, mm -hmm. that's what they call it, by piling the stones, 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 black stones, and they actually made one. So it was a, an experiment which were involved, in which were students and teachers involved. And it, uh, they were using the natural materials, so they, they were trying to recreate the the traditional way. So they actually built a house and they made a, some some kind of book about it. And it, it was really it was very nice for me to read it and to, to see that it can be done. So um, because you have an experiment uh, experiments, you actually made a house yourself, and you teach uh, in, uh, as a if yes, I yes. remember it correctly, which is the university. Do you think it might be possible? I know you said that you didn't want to do it again, but I think that the process of this, like this, and the process of actually doing something with students is really important. So I just wanted, wanted to say that I was inspired by what you did, what you already had an initiative as a, as a young architect to actually build a house, to actually get to know what you, what materials you were do, working with. So I just wanted to say that she will be the first participant. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I just have to be really thinking about it. You're actually doing it again mm -hmm. with students. Maybe small scale experiments on the university. I I would like uh, let's say like this. I would like to build again. <laughs> 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 The main construction of the building, uh, let, let's say, uh, a summer and an autumn. And uh, additional uh, elements of the building were built in the subsequent year and one more. Uh, and I remember when, when I say I want to build again, uh, I remember when, when it was the, the second year, and several months past the borders in spring, and I unrolled this uh, target of mine. And put these materials and start to dance. <laughs> it was a bliss. It, it was really, really, really great. And uh, it, it gets under your skin. Uh, but it is a very serious thing. Very serious thing to do. You have to invest your life. Well. Let's say uh, when you when you look up, look around the internet, you you will find uh, lots of let's say workshops uh, that deal with natural materials. But generally, the 
on these workshops, you're in a position uh, to have no obligations in general uh, to be there for a short amount of time. And it's generally summer and no problems with rain in general. So, uh, to really uh, build something that will take a lot of work. And uh, you have to be ready for that uh, right now. Uh, I think it, uh, it's, it's uh, to do it again can be almost impossible. Right now, with a lot of obligations all around, uh, but that time will come again. And uh, it is beautiful to do. I invite you to do it. And um, let's say I don't know whether I'm going to organize it by myself at some point, but uh, I don't see that I will do it. Uh, on the side, if you, if you know what I mean, not, not, not really something that I can get into the schedule. To me, it is, it is uh, uh, one of those life, uh, life defining projects mm -hmm. that happens all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, experiments are easy and possible, but building it through and through is a challenging thing. Thank you for your answer. It gave me another perspective. Yeah. Please try. Please try. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I have a question for you. Okay. So, uh, what do you think about this? Like, uh, is it possible for these levels to work? Also, in the season, like uh, changing because of the like we talk about it's all solar mm -hmm. electricity and like how to make it to the side here the kind of the windfalls and the rains and also the like the rain into the the water and water. So how does the materials come with the, this and is it possible to do it for all the seasons like this? So uh, I was uh, when I start this, I was of course uh, looking some examples from the world because this topic is really popular in USA and in Australia. And when I started, actually, don't they don't have these problems we have here because we have. <laughs> so I, I found myself in a lot of actually uh, problems. But yeah, we were uh, full year, and it is possible. But of course, with a lot of. Uh, Work from outside, like behind the desk, don't know. But generally, in terms of cabin and like heat and whatever, I mean, it's that's all good. Like it's it's working really good. It's really hot. I think that really materials I chose insulation and this other uh, layer of cork that it really helped. It's really really hot. Uh, and generally, in that way, we don't have issues. But as you mentioned, like solar panels and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, we manage everything, but for example, in the winter, actually, when it's really cold and sunny, that's when the solar panels work actually the best that we don't know. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's all possible just with a lot of, um, say, like uh, a lot of the <laughs> struggle uh, to make it work. But yeah, there are solutions, and we, we are managing. <laughs> Thank you. Well, okay. well, like, uh, do you get any feedback from your customers uh, about that no phone challenge or about whether they actually manage to work on their problems or um, get some like psychological effort from the time they spend over there? Since I understand that I understood that that kind of burnout recovery was the main inspiration for you. Like, did you manage to make that? Yes, I didn't even expect that guests will like react that much. Uh, first, we have a book for uh, like for reviews in Kevin that I put thinking like, okay, maybe you know I will get more honest replies because they are there while they are doing, and uh, like books are full of of uh, really detailed explanations how they spend time. Or then sometimes they send me messages when you expect, like they go home and tomorrow they are like, hey, now just to tell you. And then my whole, uh, <laughs> you know, let's say how they saw the the crazy like sunrise at five, that they woke up at five, that horses were going like in gallop, uh, the 
So, like a lot of stories of people <laughs> of, uh, getting engaged, married, uh, and uh, also stories about uh, challenges, difficult battles, also, yeah. But for that, I mean, I can just, uh, I know that people tried, but I remember like few of them telling me just uh, that their, their wish was actually that they came because of that, because they knew for that, and they always wanted to try, and, uh, and that's all. So yeah, I'm I'm really didn't even believe that that much I don't get actually to that. Without the phone, you <laughs> will we'll take it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I try. But I mean it's not mandatory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In some news, when I give a statement, they say yes, can't put the phone. Then news in newspaper. In this camp, they lock your phone and uh, <laughs> let you die. Won't believe what happened. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So thank you very much. Now we will have a short uh, refreshment. It's uh, in front of the uh, room and then we will go back and uh, have some projects that are uh, a little bit uh, uh, larger in scale, but uh, also in a way uh, eco-friendly. So. Stay <laughs> Thank you. 